Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Are you curious about what it would take to start aerial arts at your studio? Today we have studio owner and Acrobatic Arts master teacher, Kate Evans, answering that exact question. Kate Evans, hello and welcome to the Acrobatic Arts podcast. Hello, Loren. I am so excited to be here today. Well, I consider myself quite lucky to have you on the show today. I know how busy you are, and I really do appreciate you adding this to your schedule. Oh, thank you so much for asking me. I'm very excited to share with the acrobatic arts community. Before we start talking about aerial arts, Kate, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, how you got started in dance and acro, and how that led you to where you are today? Absolutely. So my journey started in New South Wales in Sydney. So I was actually born in Sydney and started dance at the age of two and a half. My family packed up and we moved to sunny Queensland, which is where I live now. So I grew up the majority of my life in Queensland, went to school and attended a little dance school. My training was RED ballet as well as crom dance, jazz and tap. So back then um, that was all we sort of did, but it was a very good training. And I went through all of my exams every year, um, all the way through, did my teacher's qualifications. And then I ended up getting into a full-time performing arts school. So packed my bags at 17 and moved down to Sydney, which was a big move um, on my own. And I attended Brent Street Performing Arts down there, um, which was a full-time course and trained with all of the sort of leading professionals in the field at that time. Did a little bit of performance work down there and then was traveling around choreographing routines and then decided that I would move back to Queensland. I went to university. I actually started out, um, believe it or not, in a Bachelor of Medicine. So I did two years in a Bachelor of Medicine on track to become a surgeon at the time and ended up taking an extra subject of psychology. And that's where I realized that my interest actually was really in humans. And it, it shouldn't have been a surprise because that's where my connections and all of the relationships are really important to me. So I ended up transferring out of medicine into psychology and completing my degree in Bachelor of Psychology at QUT in Queensland. And from there went into a postgrad in counselling as well. So that is my sort of educational background. Started teaching again back to my old stomping ground, back to my studio, the place that sort of grew me and rose me up. My teacher at the time called me into her office one night and said, I am going to be selling a school to you. And I said, pardon? <laughs> Nearly choked. And she said, I've decided that I've had enough and I, I really want you to take it over, but I can't sell it to anyone. It has to be to you. So I walked away from the meeting and cried a lot. It was happy tears and sad tears and then decided that that was going to be my past. So I bought the business and then I changed the name and that's when we became Beats Permanent Performing Arts. And the world had changed a lot since I'd done my training uh, back then. I did all of my qualifications um, with Comdance. So I am a registered teacher in ballet, um, tapping, theatrical and modern jazz, as well as my RED teachers. So I'm an RED registered teacher. I started to introduce acrobatics into the studio. At that point, it wasn't acrobatic arts and I wasn't trained in acrobatics. So I was hiring coaches and external teachers and really realized that it wasn't working in a dance genre because they were mostly gymnastics trained. So that's when I researched acrobatic arts and went and put myself on a course. So I did a week course in Marichidor. I did my M1, M2, ABH and contortion in a week and walked out absolutely mind blown. Couldn't believe the knowledge that I'd received in that week, brought it back into the studio and the rest is history, I guess. Um, That was the beginning of an amazing world and journey that I am now on now. So that's a little bit about my background. Amazing. You have quite an extensive education and training background in dance and psychology, which of course 
brings with it a wealth of knowledge as well as a unique perspective when it comes to teaching. Many listeners may already be familiar with your fabulous weekly minis that we do on the Acrobatic Arts YouTube channel, and that is why we wanted to share your success story and experience with aerial arts, which is a relatively new syllabus and a welcome addition to Acrobatic Arts, the company. Aerial arts was, you know, like quite a different thing for us to take on. If you think about the training that I came from, which was primarily dance, training to think you know all those years ago I never really imagined that I would be going into this field and um you know really developing it like we have now a fully set up aerial studio with nine points if you had asked me 10 years ago if that was going to be in my journey I would say absolutely not there's no way I could ever achieve something like that but aerial arts was like I said like it was a dream really that became realized after I'd done my acrobatic arts teacher certification so Once I started integrating the acrobatic arts program into my studio and started to get into the examination process, I realized that the training and knowledge that I'd received from these courses, they enabled me to actually take that next step. And I was so inspired and the door really opened to begin my aerial arts training. Coming from a dance background and being an already registered teacher, I could see that really ballet is acro upside down. And then the next progression was aerial, which is acro in the air. I traveled to Canada and trained with Megan Wegg, who is our creator and founder of the Aerial Arts Program. I trained with her for a couple of really intense week in hoop and hammock. And I realized that realistically, the foundations were always laid down. And I had added acro arts, which was the next layer. And then the icing on top was really achieving that dream of the aerial arts journey. What appealed to you about the program and how it was presented to you? Well, I've always been really fascinated with the athleticism of acrobatics and aerial. And it was a passion that I could honestly sit here and say was well nurtured by Cirque du Soleil. I remember watching O and Allegria and Curious and Kidam in awe and amazement at the artists. They were just so fearless, spinning in a neck hang so fast I could barely even see the, the features of the artist's face. I think a key memory of mine was actually watching Megan perform in Kidam Um, doing her foot hang in her seven fingers show as well you know like looking at this syllabus and the progressive nature of the syllabus I was absolutely amazed at just how quickly the body can adapt when training in a well thought out progressive syllabus the body's amazing the process of peripheral desensitization is the key to progression in aerial as well as you know progressing the concept of spinning so all of these things um, that to me looked so challenging and difficult and I never imagined that I could achieve when presented with a program that was so progressive they are totally achievable especially when you have those foundations already laid particularly the acrobatic training from acro arts. So you fell in love with the aerial arts syllabus what inspired you to bring it to your studio? After traveling to Canada um, and spending that time with Megan I just couldn't wait like to get on the plane and come home. I loved my time with her, but I was itching to just get back home and share all of the knowledge that I had had. Like I was, it was overflow of knowledge. I was so inspired seeing her work with her students, watching her syllabus with my eyes and seeing the progressive nature of it that I couldn't wait to bring it home and inspire my own students and develop and explore aerial with them. It came at a time just before COVID. So when I went and did my training, I came back super excited, ready to get it going, told all the students, everyone was really, really excited. I went out and purchased one little rig, um, just a little portable rig. I hire my venue. So, um, you know, my land owner was not that impressed with me cutting holes in the roof and rigging from, you know, like her beautiful studio. Plus we have, uh, it's a two-story studio. So our head height was very low. So I went out and got that one little rig brought into the studio and I will never forget the faces of all the students sitting there. Like their little eyes were like big sources. I had really ignited and inspired them. That really was the beginning of something quite um, magical here at the studio. Oh, can you talk a bit about the growing pains of starting that program at the studio? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, um, I do hire my dance studios and we didn't have the height. The roof was definitely low and we rigging from the roof was not an option. 
it was a bit of a knock and I remember ringing Megan just going I don't know what to do and that's when she said oh you know look at getting a rig so um, I started looking around to get a rig and again we still had the same issue that most of the rigs um, need to be set at quite a height but I eventually found one that had um, changeable legs so that it you know it was a portable rig that you could adapt the height so we had it set quite low so the, the first issue really was dealing with the height but we overcame that which was fantastic and then the program started to grow and we only had one rig so financially we really needed to do something to try and raise funds to be able to purchase another rig because it wasn't enough we did some workshops and um, raised some funds so that we could get another little portable rig so then we had two little portable rigs for the first I'd say 12 months and really after that 12 months I saw that you know the program was growing exponentially and something needed to happen it was by a chance really that the shed next door to us became available and I went in and spoke to the guy and said can I please lease the space and I could see they already had people rigging from the roof and I was so excited I was like amazing this is all already set up ready to go all I have to do is move in and get a rigger so I signed the lease very quickly didn't really think about it and then went to get my engineer and my rigger and you know I ran the rigger and I said oh you know can you come in and set all this stuff up for me I said they're already hanging from the roof it'll be totally fine and he said you can't hang from that I'm like yeah yeah you can they're, they're already hanging he's like no you can't and I thought, oh, he just doesn't want the work. So I went and rang somebody else and was met with the same answer. So then I panicked because I had just signed a lease on a venue that I thought was ready to go um, that was not ready to go. So then I went back to the drawing board and spoke to an engineer who created what we have now, which is an internal trust system. And this um, was a very lengthy process, but well worth the time because I had a space that was not usable at this point. So we um, engineered an a internal truss system that has three beams across and nine points. It went into manufacture, then again went back to the engineer, and then finally um, the rigger was able to come in and set it up. But while all of this was happening, we then got shut down for COVID. So I had this space. I had paid out all this money. I'd built a dance floor, insulated all the walls, painted it, and then we were shut down. And I will never forget my mum saying to me, Kate, you need to get out of that lease now. And I said, it's too late. If this is the end, we're going out with a bang and a beautiful aerial studio. So <laughs> we we persevered. It was stayed there like that for, you know, a couple, a good five months, six months that we were locked down and working online, which was actually a blessing I now see in hindsight because it gave us time to get everything organised in there and then as soon as lockdown was lifted, all the students came back to the studio and walked into this gorgeous aerial studio. For me and for those students, that was a very massive thing. Again, I saw those little faces. I saw those big smiles. Everybody was so excited, especially after lockdown. And it was uh, really important for my business as well because it helped us get back on our feet um, with a new exciting program. So that was the journey, I guess. That is a lot. And I know as a studio owner, you're always thinking about, you know, supporting your business. So I can imagine how probably frantic and worried you were. What are some of the wins that you and your studio are experiencing now since bringing aerial arts onto the studio? I would like to say that it's not just in aerial. I think some of the biggest achievements and outcomes that I've seen from having aerial is that the students training in every genre has really picked up. So for some students, you know, they, they get to a point where they get a little bit, you know, bored or, you know, like they, they feel like they're trying and trying and maybe the progression's not happening. But because we have this other element that I believe is, you know, like the link there, you've got your ballet, then you've got your ballet upside down, which is your acro, and then you've got your acro in the air. And it's also closely linked. It's keeping students in the classroom doing something different, but still that strong training with flexibility, strength and coordination. So a big win I see is keeping um, students interested and training and progressing and when we may normally lose them. So retention is a, is a big thing that I've noticed. I've also noticed that um, some students that don't always have the facility for ballet or for acro, we've been able to tap into a strength and coordination that we haven't normally tapped into before. These students are excelling in aerial. So I get quite a surprise sometimes 
you can't make snap judgments because some students that struggle in other areas pop into a hoop and just fly. They just have this internal strength and ability that we have never noticed in another genre. So for them, it's giving them this sense of intrinsic reward and accomplishment. And we're holding on to those students because they've found their thing. Whereas previously we may have lost those students. So again, coming back to retention for the business, but also, you know, they're happy and they, they found their little element that they're good at. For me, that's been a really big win for us. If there's a studio owner out there who, you know, is listening to this and is thinking, oh, I've always wanted to learn about aerial arts or, you know, start aerial at my studio. Do you have any advice or suggestions for them? I would say do it. Absolutely do it. Don't be frightened of the unknown. I think the biggest hurdle for me um, at the start was being able to say, trust the process and it's going to be okay. Where there's a will, there's a way. So although you may be hit with, um, you know, maybe you don't have the head height or maybe you don't have the finances at the time, I really believe it was one of the best things uh, we ever did here at the studio not just um, in a business sense, but on a professional level for me, as well as for my students. So I would say, bite the bullet. You are so supported. Our aerial arts community and the acrobatic arts community is here every step of the way. When I went through the process, I had Megan as a very fundamental support to me. And I would offer that to anybody out there who is interested in doing it. As a teacher, the best thing you can do is go out there and learn something that's so different and so out of your field being a beginner is such an amazing process and yeah it's just been exploding ever since like everyone's excited everyone's happy people walk in they look at the aerial studio it's like oh my goodness you know the parents think it's amazing the kids love it it's their favorite thing ever now I really would just say go for it absolutely go for it and nothing is not achievable even if you feel like it's hard um, that's where you you turn to us turn to the community and ask for advice because there's so many people out there that are happy to help. You're so right. Everyone at Acrobatic Arts and Aerial Arts is so passionate and we're willing to share our passion and our advice. I'm so glad that you brought that up, that there is a huge community willing to help. Now, Kate, you've taken things to another level. What inspired you to get involved and take it to the next level? I'd have to say um, passion and drive for a product that I really believe in. I really believe in um, the aerial arts syllabus as I do in the acrobatic arts syllabus. When I see something work the way that it has worked in my studio, like I've seen it firsthand, we started at the beginning, the most raw beginner you could ever imagine. And we now have students um, professional level aerial. So they do competitions, they are advanced aerialists. And for me to see that process happen in my eyes, I absolutely believe in it. And now all I want to do is to share that with the world. Also to make sure that we're training our students safely and progressively, which is, again, a very big passion of mine. We want our students to go through their training with us and finish in one piece. Hmm. And that's very, very important to me. The biomechanics work and we don't need to push them unnecessarily. If we follow this lovely syllabus, it all just happens. There's inbuilt injury prevention and you will have success. Being in the role that I'm in now allows me to share that um, with people and also develop the product even further. It's something that is very rare in the circus world. So it's a new thing to get that sort of syllabus written down and the progressive nature. And there is a huge market out there for that, especially coming from a dance background. So in the dance world, most students and parents really like to see a progressive syllabus. They like to see their students achieving. They like to know that they're getting better every day they go in. So this syllabus has really helped us to show that every day, you know, we're developing this product. It's not just finished and that's it. It's constant development of this is great. Let's change this up a little bit. We're adding in this. We've started exams now. We've had our first um, couple of sessions of exams this year, which has been amazing seeing it um, in other studios. So all of these little areas um, are growing the product to become even better every single day, which is to me, the epitome of a, a true progressive syllabus. The nature of the program is to always continually evolve. And um, as the world changes and we learn more, um, we bring it back in and, you know, keep reinventing it so that the product is the very best product that's out there. And I truly believe that it is. That is why I was so passionate to get 
on board and share with people, um, you know, in delivering courses as well as examining the gorgeous students. Now, I'm sure we have a lot of listeners who are inspired by you because I sure am. So as the summer months approach for Australia and New Zealand, could you tell us what the Acrobatic Arts Australian Division has to offer for teachers and students? Oh, Loren, we have so many exciting things coming up. I am, cannot wait for summer. So not only are we back for teacher training in person, but we are presenting a new acro convention for dancers in January called Accelerate. And this is going to be amazing. I cannot wait. This is Australia's newest and biggest acro convention. And the faculty that we're bringing in are the best in the world. We'll be doing aerial and tumbling and partnering and transitions. It's going to be an amazing couple of days. So that's a really exciting thing coming up. We'll also be presenting our teacher certification programs in acrobatic arts as well as aerial. So we're doing module one, we're doing module two, our aerial and back handspring workshops. These are all going to be happening in January. We will be visiting Marichidor. So in Queensland, we'll be doing Brighton. We're doing Roselands, Wangara. So Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide. We're also going to New Zealand this year, December, which is super exciting. We haven't been out to New Zealand for a very long time. And we'll be delivering a week of our acrobatic arts teacher certifications there, as well as our aerial hoop. So we have aerial hoop happening in Queensland as well as New Zealand, which is super exciting. But I do know that not everybody can make it for those in-person courses. So we will also be having um, live online courses throughout the year following that. But it is a jam-packed summer of so many exciting things. So teachers, make sure that you check out that space in your calendar because it's going to be something not to miss. I cannot wait to connect with all of the new teachers for the new season coming up. Now, why should teachers consider this summer for their professional development? Every time I look on Facebook or on a dance teacher's page, all I see is looking for an acro teacher, looking for an aerial teacher. It's every day, constant stream of people looking for um, teachers that are qualified and know what they're doing. At Acrobatic Arts here in Australia, we hear from studios every day, even aside from social media, but via email, looking for certified teachers. It's a skill set that's just so high in demand at the moment. Adding acro dance certification to your portfolio not only increases your value as a teacher, it undoubtedly creates more opportunity for you and your students. So it really sets you apart. It's the point of difference, just like Ariel. Give yourself that point of difference. Get accredited with a company that is really the leader, the absolute forerunner in acrobatic and aerial training. I would strongly suggest getting those qualifications on. And as a contractor, you will always be working. And as a studio owner, your business will be lifted and elevated to a complete new level. And what about those teachers who are already module one certified? Can you explain sort of the progressions that we have in our modules? Absolutely. So that's um, a great place to be if you're already module one certified, because there's the next step. So after module one, we have our module two um, teacher certification course which rounds out the second part of the syllabus going into the higher level tumbling skills. So from level seven all the way up to pre-pro three. Module two, as well as our aerial back handspring workshop, which is a prerequisite to taking module two, are only offered in person. So for those teachers that have done their module one, definitely jump on a course in January because as I said, their module two and aerial back handspring are in-person only courses. They are amazing courses, hands-on training learning how to spot the high level skills and like I said are only offered in person so definitely jump on those courses it's a perfect opportunity to get that next step of your training done so that you can offer the next step to your students we always want to be one step ahead so we don't we want to make sure that as soon as we've done one element we're, we're taking on the next so that we're one step ahead of our students and ready to progress them when they're ready to progress teachers in Australia and New Zealand definitely register for some of those courses and you may even get to meet Kate, which would be fantastic. So Kate, I love when we have the opportunity to work together and today was no different. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your passion and your aerial arts journey with us. Thank you so much, Lauren, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be able to share with you as well as with the acrobatic arts community. What a fantastic success story, not only for Kate's business, but for her dancers as well. 
You can always find more information about the Aerial Arts Syllabus on the Acrobatic Arts website. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.